Hi, I'm naturopathic doctor Emily Lipinski, and I have a clinical focus on thyroid health and healing the thyroid naturally. I primarily address this in women, but it is also true that men can suffer from hypothyroid disease. And since I've started focusing on thyroid health, and really since I started my clinical practice, a lot of people ask me why I chose this focus on the thyroid gland, why thyroid health. And the first reason is probably because I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism myself when I was 27. And at the time I felt really lost. I was told that I would be put on thyroid medication for the rest of my life and that there was nothing else I could do about the situation which in the last uh, eight years or so, I have found that there's actually a lot you can do to help your thyroid gland heal uh, using herbs, diet, lifestyle, and uh, definitely changes in um, the types of food that you consume can actually really, really benefit the thyroid gland. It may not prevent the need for lifelong medication, but it may reduce the amount of medication that someone needs, and I have had patients over the years that with some herbal change, herbal interventions and some dietary changes, they've actually been able to avoid uh, medication use for the time being. So also people ask me, why is the thyroid gland so important? And the thyroid gland is the master metabolism in your body. It's the master regulator of your metabolism. It helps everything go. It's located in your neck right here. It's a butterfly shaped organ. And the thyroid gland helps regulate how much weight gain you have or how uh, much weight loss you have. It regulates the temperature. It regulates how much you detoxify, so how many um, bowel movements you have a day. It helps the brain function. It helps the heart function. It uh, is so important for every single cell in your body and for every single gland in your body. Uh, so for individuals that think that they may be having thyroid problems, or maybe you haven't, it hasn't even been on your radar, but you're having trouble losing weight, or you have dry hair, skin, and nails, you should definitely look into the thyroid. The main symptoms of hypothyroid disease or slow thyroid function is inability to lose weight, so you haven't really changed your diet or how much you exercise or there hasn't been any reason for you to gain weight but you noticed you're gaining weight or you can't lose any weight. That is probably the number one reason people come to see me and we start investigating the thyroid function. Second is constipation or sluggish bowels not eliminating fully every day or a few times a day. Ideally, you should be having a bowel movement at least twice a day that's easy, well-formed, um, and looks brown in color. If you have less than this or you're going to the washroom every other day or every three days and you have other symptoms of, of hypothyroidism, you probably should look into it. Third is definitely feeling cold. This was the biggest symptom for me. I was freezing even in the summer. I wanted to have three or four blankets on me. So if you're someone that likes lots of blankets that always wants to wear socks because your feet are always cold, your hands are always cold, you always think that the temperature could be warmer in the house or in the office, that could be a sign of low thyroid function. Slow uh, thought processing. So if you're having a little bit of trouble finding words or you just feel like foggy head, that's another sign of hypothyroidism. And then dry hair, skin, and nails is also another very common sign of low thyroid function. If this sounds like you, if you're having difficulty losing weight, if you're always cold, you have dry hair, skin, and nails, um, foggy thinking, also mood changes, especially lower mood or anxiety. If you're, have, if you're experiencing these symptoms, it's really important to get a blood test to look for thyroid function. Now, the most common blood test uh, that's conducted is a blood test called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. And although that catches some low thyroid, it doesn't catch all of it. Uh, in my practice, I make sure my patients have four different tests 
for thyroid function, four different blood tests. So the first one is TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone blood test. But then also I check T3, T4, which are two thyroid hormones. And I check the thyroid antibodies known as TPO antibodies. Some people have elevated antibodies that are actually affecting their thyroid, but their TSH hasn't changed yet. Um, likewise, sometimes the patient has low thyroid hormones, low T3 and low T4, but again, the TSH looks normal. So when we only test TSH on blood work, we definitely miss some um, hypothyroid cases. Eventually the TSH will change, but in my practice, I really love um, looking at prevention. If we can catch uh, lower thyroid function in the early stages, there's so much more that can be done. I hope you found this helpful. Definitely leave any comments or questions below. I'd love to hear from you.